Here in this part, we shall discuss about the renewable energy resources the human beings already had been utilizing since ancient times. One of the most utilized one is the solar energy. Solar energy is the energy from the sun in the form of light, heat, and nowadays also can be converted into electricity. Sun is the primary source of energy to the earth and can be harvested either directly or indirectly. For example, the energy harvested from wind and biomass is an indirect form of solar energy. One of the prominent evidences come from the remains of human dwellings installed during different times in the history and we can collect information from. The amount of light and duration of longer availability depending upon east-west direction has influenced the architecture in every era and civilizations. The housing in colder places required more sunlight and warmth so they were designed as southwest facing. In these pictures, the position of the sun during winters and summers have been shown. As the sun's path on the earth at a location moves away from the equator during winter and summer as you can see by the shadow, the housing are used to be installed as south facing to receive more sunlight during the winter season because the winters are of longer duration in the cold countries. Here you can see in the pictures of some of the reconstructed dwellings from the Stone Age. The materials in the housing structures were arranged in such a way so as to receive more sunlight to keep the interiors warm. During the winter season, because the winters are of longer duration in the cold countries, the housings were mostly made of south facing. During the prehistoric times, when the Stone Age was predominant, humans used the stones, mammoth bones, wood to construct dwellings. In the first picture on the right top, we can see the reconstructed architecture of a stone hedge. In the second picture on the top left is the reconstructed architecture of a housing made up of mammoth bones and tusks from one of the oldest civilizations, Missouri, during 24,000 to 12,000 BC in Ukraine. And in the third picture shows a reconstructed architecture of Neolithic dwelling which used both stones and wood. Here we can see some more pictures of different housing structures from different civilizations. Here we can notice very easily about either the materials employed for construction or the natural site selected for the dwelling. The humans have taken into sincere consideration of sunlight or solar incidences to erect the architecture. In the first picture, the ancient housing of Tatwin in Tunisia and we can see the sun facing front of the construction. Down below is the ancient town of Hesenkif in Turkey, which was a cliff dwelling and facing the solar incidence site. Next is the ruins of a city excavated at Rakhigarhi in India, which shows the direction of the walls erected. And down below is the Parthenon atop in Greece and the sunlight facing direction of the architecture is clearly noticed. The cliff palace in Mesa Verde National Park in Colorado is the largest cliff dwelling in the North America. Humans had already discovered it how to build a shelter so as to utilize the solar energy maximum. The people who once lived there had lives that revolved around the sun in more ways than one. The passive solar energy and the weather protection provided by the monstrous overhanging cliff above the settlement is just one nice example. Several million years before the modern man or homo sapiens appeared in the fossil records, our ape-man cave dwelling ancestors lived under naturally occurring stone arch cave entrances. They did not invent arches or build them. But as human intelligence improved, our predecessors did observe how they were living under arches in harmony with nature. If the cave opening accidentally faced the equator, they were more comfortable in the summer and winter. The ancient Greeks abstracted this knowledge and built their homes around it. As the ancient Greeks ran into fuel shortages, 
They started to think more about how to design buildings so as to maximize the heat gain and retention during winter months. They began orienting buildings and entire city grids in such a way so that the houses had extra southern exposure to, the, to capture the sun rays from low in the sky in the coldest part of the year. Romans eventually took things a step further by adding glasses to their windows in order to retain more of the heat gathered from the sunlight. This added an advantage in terms of the stronger structure that requires less building material compared to the horizontal or straight stones or woods. Here we can see some more examples of arched top doors and windows. This design is inspired from the natural cake designs. And various kinds of designs here can explain better. Here is a collection of pictures of housing architecture from different parts of the world. On contrary to the south facing entrance housing in the colder countries, the tropical countries chose to build east facing houses so as to receive the calmer sun rays than to receive afternoon hot rays during the afternoon and evening part of the day. The tropical regions have relatively and significantly shorter winters and longer summer season. This explains how the housing designs as well as the materials were chosen differently by humans from different civilizations depending upon the solar energy and the weather. Here we can see some more examples of housing architecture to utilize the solar energy by different civilizations. The front part of the house, the roofing is extended to little longer so as to escape the solar incidence during the noon part of the day as well as to save the housing interiors from the extra heat. But the, during the winter part, the longer radiations could enter into the house to keep the interiors warm. Here one more example you can see the south facing courtyard houses in the Greek cities of Prime during 300 BC is an example of microclimate design. All the houses are facing on the same side so as to capture more of the solar incidence and in the left side of the slide you can see a sundial so as to observe the time of the day and one more picture in below is a housing architecture in the courtyard so as every part of the housing can receive good sunlight. Not only housing architecture, the solar incidence was also considered as one of the important bases for building observatories to record the day length and time. Here we can see some of the pictures from observatories. The picture on the top left is the horizontal sundial located in Australia and some of the pictures from the sundials and uh, solar instruments at Jantar Mantar, India and there is one observatory in South Korea at Chamsongdae in Gyeongju which is the oldest such construction found in Asia. Now we shall discuss about the role of solar energy in food storage. Apart from creating the seasonal patterns which directly affects the agriculture, the solar energy is also utilized by the human beings for preserving food. Here we can see the kimchi pots arranged across the slope of a hill for facing the solar rays and facilitating the natural fermentation process. In the picture down below is the kimchi pot which are even buried inside the earth to trap the thermal energy in the soil. In ancient times, people were largely dependent upon the solar day length for kimchi making. But nowadays, kimchi refrigerators are available and are used for this purpose. Although kimchi making is a huge food processing industry in South Korea and heavily dependent on special kimchi refrigerators, the South Koreans still regard this can never match the taste of traditional kimchi from the buried pots. In the top right hand picture are the Pickle making in Southeast Asian countries, primarily the Indian countries, and the list of 
collection of different kinds of pickles here shown in the jars which are very popular in the Indian cuisine. This is an example of solar drying of agriculture products, which is largely used by both tropical and cold countries. And these pictures are the drying of chilies, fig, gourd, and much perishable, the tomatoes and persimmons have been shown. And also these vegetables can be freeze dry so as to stop it from being perished and can be stored for longer times for food safety. Here are some more examples of drying of food vegetables. These are some of the dried examples of fresh vegetables, fruits, herbs, plums, fishes and shrimps. It is unknown since when the human beings started drying of food and domesticated this process, but it is something, a practice which is alive till today. Solar energy is instrumental for food storage. The dried vegetables are now in huge demand as it is easier to save from perishing and trade to distant places. Solar energy is free of cost and free of pollution and return good yields and profit. And now we shall continue to part four of this lecture.